so the lights are lighting up actually there's no lights we're gonna have to wait for the checkered flag to be dropped or not the checkered flag the starting flag to be dropped and away we go we're right up behind Sebastian Buemi and we go right around the outside of Buemi anyway so we got Senna right at the back of Frines and Senna just went into the back of Frines actually quite a light accident but well that was weird Sauzan just went off to the right hand side of the track and then went back on it PK's coming under threat from Simona Di Silvestro. Silvestro's got the inside line, but there's been chaos at the back. PK's lost his rear wing. Daniel Apt has lost his front wing. Again, we're right in front of this. We're, this is as we get past Frines. And Degrassi is gone. He's gone flying up the grass bank. And, well, that is Degrassi's race completely destroyed. He is out of the race. This is all in the same lap, by the way. All of these incidents happening on the same lap. And Daniel Apt has gone. And this really unregulated, quite dangerous pit lane. And, oh, my word. Some incident happened in the pit lane. We got whacked by some front wing, I believe it was them. Get the AI to get me into the pit box. Just because or else it will glitch out or I'll be sat in the pit lane forever. And Oh my word. The one time I get the AI in this game to drive for me and they just go into the back of Duval. Silvestro Buemi. Again, it's another incident. Buemi at the back of the pit lane just has no regard for people at the front of the pit lane. So we skip forward to the end of the race, and Nico Pross has been able to, to survive the Dutch E-Prix, and he's going to win the Dutch E-Prix at Zandvoort because he's been able to survive it, I think is the accurate term. PK comes through in second, as he's been able to beat Burn and to Costa. Antonio Felix to Costa in third, what an amazing result. It was an Armageddon this race was, but we're going to come through to take last place, ninth place, two solid championship points, honestly. Bearing in mind how crazy that race was, how dangerous it was, I will take that. Right then, so hey guys, it's PSL here, and we're here for the sixth race in this Formula E series on Formula 1 tracks. And after the destruction derby that was the Dutch E-Prix, we're here at Monza for the Italian E-Prix, a track very different to the ones they use in Formula E. Um, at the moment, but you know, I mean, maybe, maybe one day Formula E goes here. I don't see it happening for quite a while, though. I mean, anyway, yeah, practice. Here, here we are with Jacques Villeneuve. He's in his pit box or pit garage, and uh, yeah, um, exiting his pit garage, he lost his front wing, and that always happened for Villeneuve. And because of that, uh, Villeneuve never set a lap in practice, which was very strange to see, but um. Moving on to qualifying, because that was really practice. Uh, qualifying, we're coming round Parabolica. And as you can see, uh, the best lap we did previously was in the 157s. And we're two tenths behind Sarazan at the moment, but much, much better. Um, yeah, we're doing much better than ourselves, um, if I can actually speak English. And yet we're in the 156s, a 156.7, nearly a second quicker than, um, than our previous lap. And we're still quite a few tenths off of Sarazan, but you know... Uh, we can't, we're not going to be first. And look at the end of qualifying. Nico Prost ended qualifying in his pit garage with three wheels. And Daniel Apt also hasn't set a lap in qualifying, much like Nico Prost yet. Daniel Apt hasn't got his front wing. So there must have been some crash between those two. I don't know what happened. I mean, aside from that, uh, I'm slowest of the people who finished. Jack Villeneuve ended up taking pole position, which is really surprising considering he didn't even set a lap in practice. Uh, D'Ambrosio 2nd, PK 3rd, Buemi 4th, Robin Frines 5th, bearing in mind, Robin Frines still hasn't scored a point, so if he, can, if he can score a point in this race, that would be nice for him, and he's in 5th, so things are looking good, we're in 16th, no we're not, uh, I'm 18th on the starting grid, don't know why, Nico Pross and Daniel Lapp should be behind me, don't know what that's all about, but anyway, away we go for the Italian e Prix. Well, we'll find out why da uh, where Daniel Apt and Nico Prost are in a minute. Anyway, we're going to head down towards the first corner, and we're going to see if heading into the Retafilio chicane, if there's any crash, I'm sure there will be. After Zandvoort, we saw that AI really don't mind crashing, and no exiting, exiting actually, the Retafilio, and we'll find no crashes. I mean... I've dropped down a few places. I was ahead of Sarazan and Silvestro. That's gone as we ran wide at the exit. But no, no crashes. Really surprised by that. But, you know, we're now actually nearly a second off of the AI because we had such a poor exit. We ran out wide. Um, and there's the chaos. 
Yep, there it is. The second chicane. Took their time about it, the AI, but you know, the AI, they've been pretty accident prone this series. And there's a few uh, front and rear wings that went flying there. We're still in last. We had to cut the corner back there because I was distracted by, you know, all of the wings uh, that, that went flying there. I just got distracted. And there's even more chaos coming out of the second Lesmo. Like, what's even happened this race? How many cars are without aerodynamic parts? That's what we're going to have to find out. I don't know. I imagine there's quite a few. I mean, look, Sarazan up ahead. He seems fine. I think his car is perfectly okay. And where we go? He, okay, he slowed down quite a bit. I think it's because Oliver Turvey was slowing down quite a bit there. And as we can see, Silvestro's car looks fine. But Antonio Felix da Costa's car really doesn't. He's got no rear wing, so he was one of the people involved in the crash on the first lap. Um, but, I mean, this is... Uh, to be fair, Monza, it isn't too bad losing your rear wing because the straight line speed you get... Uh, it's quite good, as we saw at Hockenheim when I lost my rear wing. I gained an extra mile an hour straight line speed, but De Costa had to break early for that corner. There's Loic Duval up ahead. He similarly has uh, lost his rear wing, so chaos at the start. And replay at the start with Villeneuve, and I've lost my words because De uh, Prost and Daniel Apt have started at the front. What's that all about? They didn't set a lap in qualifying, but yet... Daniel Lapt and Nico Prost start first and second. Uh, Villeneuve got ahead of Nico Prost temporarily, but, well, I mean, Villeneuve's nudge, Villeneuve nudges Prost a bit. Fair enough, I would. I mean, why on earth are Prost and Apt starting first and second? What is that all about? Well, anyway, we'll, we'll get back to that in a second. Uh, crashes that happened on the first lap. There were quite a few. The first one between Buemi and D'Ambrosio. And there, in about... 5th, 6th place, I mean, you know, they were in a good position, well, not anymore, because they've got to come into the pits, and then Degrassi goes into the back of Buemi, I believe, so that's a three-car crash pile-up there between D'Ambrosio, Buemi, and Degrassi, and actually Degrassi's going to get the run on Buemi, yeah, he is going into the first Lesmo, they both have lost some aerodynamic parts, and oh my word, <laughs> Buemi goes into the back of Degrassi, which is sort of fair enough, because Degrassi went into the back of Buemi, but... Both Degrassi and Buemi have got no front wing or rear wing at this moment in time because they've both been rear-ended and have rear-ended someone. It's uh, quite a crazy race, really. Um, just on that crash alone, then we got a crash between Loic Duval and Heifeld. We saw Duval didn't have a rear wing, but he's gone to the back of Heifeld. Okay, so that explains why he doesn't have a front wing, but that doesn't explain why Duval lost his rear wing. So let's have a look at this. This is... Another crash, Senna and Duval, we can see what's going to happen here. Well, no, we can't actually, because there's jean eric Verne who's kind of in the way. Verne kind of the protecting barrier between Senna and Duval, but I guess because Verne came out of the first lap unscathed. Yeah, there's uh, the wing flying there from Degrassi's car. But I mean, we're still not seeing Senna that close, really. He's seen all the front wings fly off, and yeah, he's about to cause another one to come flying off. So Senna got the best view in the world of all those wings flying off and then he just caused another one himself so not really a good race for Senna or Duval there um, and one final crash the final crash that happened on the first lap between Turvey and DaCosta there's DaCosta he just bows into shot he tried to make the move on uh, Senna as we saw earlier on and now I think it's gonna be the same sort of crash sort of he sort of is the same crash I mean Duval and Senna Duval was going slowly but De Costa kind of had to go slowly because he kind of had nowhere else to go. He was stuck between. He was kind of boxed in between Turvey, Senna, and Duval, so he didn't really have anywhere else to go. There's D'Ambrosio, the leader of the wounded cars. He is coming into the pits, along with um, seven others. Actually, everyone who got involved in the crash has come into the pits, apart from Bruno Senna. Bruno Senna's decided to stay out another lap. I don't know why, but that is seven cars into the pits. And what a manic start has been. And now these guys, they're all going to have to do two-stop strategies because they've pitted on the first lap. The fuel can only last nine laps. So they're going to have to do uh, a two-stop strategy. So all these people, yeah, they're, the chances of them scoring points this race is pretty slim. And the same thing can be said for Bruno Senna when he decides to come into the pits as well. But D'Ambrosio's leading this separate train. Degrassi is in second in that train, which, uh, to all intents and purposes, is 11th and 12th, I believe. Anyway, it doesn't matter, we're right up behind 
Bruno Senna. And Bruno Senna's going to front wing, so I don't know why he decided to stay out. Everyone else came into the pit. But it should be an easy move into the Ascari chicane. Yeah, but we're able to break later just because Senna, he's, well, he's got no front wing. So, you know, it's an easy move, really. Um, so also the AI did seem to go quite slow in the Ascari chicane. That is something I did find out. Anyway, Senna is exiting the pits. Most of the train have got past. What about the back markers? Turvey's got past. What about DaCosta? He's at the back of this train, but no, DaCosta's got the momentum. He's got past Senna. So Senna is at the back of this separate train. The two-stop train Senna is at the back of. Um, so yeah, really, we've got two massive groups of cars, really, as you will see right now. There's the group of cars, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, there's the group of cars at the front. The top ten, who didn't get involved in the crash. And then there's 11th downwards, who did get involved in the crash. And the gap between them is massive. So, really, if you're in the top ten, like ourselves, we're basically guaranteed to score a point. Because everyone's got to stop again. So, you know, we're basically guaranteed to finish in the points as long as we don't crash. And speaking of which, we're able to go around the first Lesmo past Burton without going into the back of him which is something that AI really struggled uh, doing on the first lap going around the Lesmos without crashing uh, I don't really know the first lap was quite mad from the AI not Zandvoort levels of craziness but still anyway when we got the run on generic Vern Vern came out of the second Lesmo quite slowly and now we got the inside line going into the Ascari chicane just about break later and yeah it's made no difference to the team's championship but still, for the Drivers' Championship, we're in a good position in the Drivers' Championship. We need a good result to maintain that. I mean, we're in an okay result, a point finishing result, but not an amazing result. And getting past Vern will help that. But Jack Villeneuve, he's getting the run on Nico Prost. And Prost and Apt, the two cheating... How can I put it nicely? I'll just say the two cheaters. Uh, Villeneuve, for the integrity of this race, is going to have to get past Prost and Apt. If either Prost or Apt win this race because they cheated, we can't have that happening. Villeneuve is going to get the better run out of the first corner. Yeah, but, you know, he, Prost is still ahead. But uh, Villeneuve has got the inside line and it's a foregone conclusion. Villeneuve is back up into second place. And Villeneuve is going to make a charge now for Daniel Apt. But this race, the integrity of this race has gone down the water. The second, or down the drain, the second Prost and Apt jump the start I mean all I did was accelerate qualifying I didn't skip finish session I accelerated through it but apparently that causes glitches we saw the same thing with D'Ambrosio and Hockenheim anyway we've got the run on PK Jr and Robin Freins both of those guys really close to each other um, and we get past PK and into the Ascari chicane coming out of the Ascari chicane we're gonna get past Freins so there you go it took me about four laps from when I passed Vern to catching up to PK as you can see lap uh, seven at the bottom there, but it took a long time. We were quicker than the AI, but it's such a slipstream reliant track, Monza, that you know it took a long time to get there. But anyway, Silvestro is gonna try, she's gonna try and make a move on Burton. And I thought we got past this whole phase of crashing, but apparently not. Silvestro seems like a crash she caused. I mean, everybody was running very close to each other, Sil Silvestro just seemed like she couldn't for whatever reason. and. Yeah, she just went into the back of Burton. She just kind of turned into Burton. Um, everyone else is able to race close together cleanly, but Silvestro wasn't. So she's lost her front wing, Burton his rear wing, but it's kind of on the bubble of the pit stop period. So they're still only going to have to do a one stop this race because, you know, they're, they're kind of right on the one stop uh, pit bubble. We get past Nico Cross, our favourite overtaking spot, the Ascari chicane. We're up into a podium position. That's fantastic. Uh, Villeneuve and Apt about four seconds ahead of us, but at least Villeneuve has been able to catch up to Daniel Apt. Thank God for that. And hopefully Villeneuve can get past Daniel Apt, because Daniel Apt should not be at the front of the field. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it, but he didn't qualify, so he should be at the back, not the front. And Villeneuve, he's right up behind Daniel Apt. Is he going to make a move? No, he's not. He's gone into the pits. And this is a very good tactical decision. Villeneuve, he's going to try and get the undercut on Daniel Apt. And as we've seen... With the Formula E mod, that should work with the very long pit stop times. So Villeneuve is going to get the undercut. We sh this should see him come out in the lead of the race. we got Freins coming in, PK coming in, and what on earth has Freins done? Freins has just gone into the back of Villeneuve, and even though Villeneuve's in the pit box, they won't replace his rear wing until he comes back into the pit, because they don't have it ready. 
And Fines has just completely ruined Villeneuve's race, so Villeneuve's going to have to come into the pits again. Fines has got no damage, so you know every everything's alright for him. Anyway, Vern gets past Silvestro, because weirdly, Silvestro, even though she had no rear wing, she decided not to come into the pits. Villeneuve, Fines, and, uh, and PK came in tactically. Burton came in, because he had no rear wing, but Silvestro decided to stay out, despite... The fact she had no front wing, maybe it's because her teammate was coming in this lap? Who knows, but Vern does get past Silvestro, easy move there. But really, uh, we come into the pits, so I'm still about three and a half, four seconds behind Daniel Apt. Ahead uh, of Nico Pross, we're in second. Um, I, w I, I was going to say a net second, but no, we should come out in second, because obviously Villeneuve, who would have jumped us, has got to come into the pits the same lap as us to get a new rear wing. So Villeneuve's race has been destroyed. Everyone who's going past us is the people on the one-stop train. But, no, the two-stop train, rather. That's the issue, is they're going to have to come into the pits a lap later. Daniel Lap gets past us. We should be coming out any time now. Come on, what's taking us so long? Come on, we just need to exit the pit box. Come on. Nico Prost has got past us. I'm not surprised. And so is jean Eric Vern. Prost and Vern have got past us in the pit stops. I'm not surprised. We were sat in that pit box for ages. We're out in 16th place, but obviously, bearing in mind, you've got everybody in the two-stop train to, uh, to factor in. Plus, obviously, Villeneuve, who's now a new addition to that. Uh, but really, I mean, what's going on here? I mean, we come out in 16th place. So here's Frines. Well, Frines, PK, and Burton, the people who came in tactically. They came in a lap early. Where are they going to come out? So they're just coming past the pits now. There's Daniel Apt. So they're behind Daniel Apt. But, yeah, they came out ahead of us. We didn't see them go past. That's because they were so far ahead. As you can see, there's even Nathaniel Burton, who lost his rear wing, has come out ahead of Prost. Us, uh, Vern and ourselves, and that's just because the undercut was so strong, especially around a long lap like this. Um, so, Frines, Burton, and P PK have done a strategy masterclass. And bearing in mind, Verton only did it because he lost his rear wing, that was circumstantial. Um, but one thing it does say is if Villeneuve didn't get rear ended in pit lane, Villeneuve would easily be leading this race, he'd be miles ahead of Daniel Att. So, you know, the integrity of this race has been destroyed. Uh, we got past all the people in the two-stop strategy. Now we're going past Senna, because Senna has come to the pits, because obviously he's out of sync with everyone else on the two-stop strategy. So we're in seventh. Now, bearing in mind, we came to the pits in second. So, hmm, we lost quite a few places. I mean, obviously you can exclude Vilna, but we were jumped by Vern and Prost in the pit lane, and then obviously Frines and PK and Burton did the better pit-stop strategy. So all credit to them. We've got some, we've got some overtake... To, uh, we got some overtakes to do here, and we get around Vern, and there we go. And we're actually, nearly losing it on the exit of the Ascari chicane, but we're up into sixth place, which is okay. But you know, considering we came into the pits in second, not really that great. And now Silvestro is going to try and get past John Eric Vern. She's going to try and get her revenge from earlier on. I mean, we saw, uh, we saw that Vern was ahead of Silvestro, and then. Well, I don't really know. I mean, no, Silvestro's behind Vern. Then Vern got past when she lost her front wing. And then now Silvestro's got back past Vern. So it's been an epic battle between Silvestro and Vern, which has been interesting from their perspective. Now we're getting the run, heading down towards Parabolica. Yeah, we're kind of maxing out really now with Nico Prost, but we're going to break later. We've got the inside line. We're up into fifth place, which is all right in the grand scheme of things, but bearing in mind you got to bear in mind that we came to the pits in second, and the person who's leading this race has cheated. Nico Pross cheated, but fair enough, he's only in sixth. Daniel Apt should, be, should have started the race at the back. So, you know, I mean, we skipped forward a few laps. Uh, we're starting the last lap of the race, and I've, I've just about been able to catch up to the cheater and the pit lane strategy gods. We've been able to catch up to them, but... You know, we were right up by Burton, but, you know, it took us about four or five laps from when we passed Prost to catch up to them. So, unless we can catch up significantly on the last lap, which we can't, if anything, I think they pulled out ever so slightly on us. So, we're in fifth, Burton's just up ahead. Um, but, I'm not going to, uh, normally I get really excited at this point in the race commentary. Um, I would do if it was Frines winning, but it's Daniel Apt. And coming around Parabolica, Daniel Apt, who didn't settle up in qualifying, who cheated, who start he started on pole position when he didn't sell up in qualifying, and because of that, he's cheated, but he's he's won the Italian E Prix. Um fair enough. Well, well whatever. Um anyway, more interestingly, Robin Frines has come from scoring no points this series to 18. 
Wham Bam, there you go, he's on 18 points, he came second. Nelson PK third. You know, let's just let's just forget Daniel Apt. Let's forget about him. A good result for PK and a really good uh, result for Robin Frines there. Um, although Frines did take out Villeneuve, so I'm kind of a little bit angry with him for that. But we do catch up on the lap back to the pits after the race is done. We forced Daniel Apt out. Really not happy with him there. As you can see, Heifeld, fastest lap of the race. But I'm just sending a message to Daniel Apt that he doesn't deserve the race win. I just thought I'd nudge him out there at the Sky Chicane just to prove the point. But... Uh, apt as one. I'd rather kind of pretend. I'd rather he hadn't, but still. Fryn second, PK, Burton. Actually, Fryn's PK and Burton did very well. You know, good strategy there. Uh, Sylvester would have done if she came to the pits early. Uh, Villeneuve down in 14th in the end. So, really, a really bad result for Villeneuve. But I mean, it was all Robin Fryn's fault. But Villeneuve could have, should have, and I really wish he did win that race. Anyway, onto the Drivers' Championship, and, you know, I got a decent result this race, 5th place, um, but there were quite a few people who also had very good results. Nelson PK, who got 3rd, he's right up behind. He's now my nearest challenger, considering Duval didn't score any points. And Vern's also up there as well, so is Neko Prost, the cheater as well, Neko Prost. And also one thing I should mention, I forgot to mention it on the race results screen, but Lucas Degrassi, who is leading the two-stop train, because Villeneuve came into the pits, Degrassi actually got 10th. So he actually did score a point this race, so fair enough. Degrassi, I thought everybody in that two-stop train was done. But Degrassi, who was the quickest in that train, somehow at some point passed Ambrosio and he did get a point. And as you can see, I've given the pole position points to Villeneuve because there's no way Daniel Apt or Nico Prost have earned them, deserve them, or should get them. Teams Championship, and there's not much to say here, DS Virgin... We've got back past Edam, so, but really, the battle for who's going to win the team's championship is between Virgin and Edam, so we keep switching places. At the moment, we're just ahead of Edam's. Next EV have moved up from 5th to 3rd. They, To be fair, Next EV and Dragon Racing essentially swap places, because even though Oliver Turvey came last this race, PK with his 3rd place, you know, did wonders for Next EV, but it's still very tightly packed. Andretti did get some decent points, obviously getting second place this race, and Silvestro got some points as well. So Andretti are catching up, but there's still 21 points by Team Aguri. But the team's championship is tightening up slightly, but there's still quite a wide range. But third to eighth is really tight. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and I'll try and get this qualifying glitch fixed. I mean, I know what's caused it, and the solution is something I didn't really want to do. Basically, I'm going to have to click finish session rather than accelerate the time because it fixes not only the AI starting further ahead than they should do, but it also means that the AI set realistic qualifying time. So it's a double whammy if I just click finish session because it means that I might not actually start at the back every race, which I have done since Canada. But yeah, anyway, Monaco the next race, qualifying's crucial, so I'll get it done. And Monaco, a track which all the Formula E teams have experience with. Obviously, we're going to be using the full length of Monaco, and I hope, I really hope, that the AI, this crashing tendency that they seem to have, I really hope that goes away by Monaco, because if it doesn't, we're going to see another Armageddon, sort of like we saw in the real-life Formula E season, but that's not really what I want. I kind of want a reasonably clean race, and hopefully we'll get it. So I'll see you then.